I'm going to show you how to perform Monte Carlo integration in Python. But before we learn how to do it in Python, we will uh, learn a bit of theory about Monte Carlo integration. So Monte Carlo integration is about using Monte Carlo simulations to perform integration. Integration is something that you can perform using hand, but there are also other ways of doing that. But you can also use Monte Carlo simulations to do integration or to find value of an integration right so it's a numerical technique that means you use samples random samples to calculate the solution to the given problem and that's an approximate solution not the exact solution or accurate solution uh, as you may know monte carlo simulation uses random samples to arrive at an approximate solution so in situations where it's very difficult to find a closed form solution, an accurate solution to the problem, we use Monte Carlo simulations. We take all kinds of situations through random samples and perform our calculations, again approximate calculation, take the average of that and that becomes a closed solution to the problem, an approximate solution to the problem but not necessarily the exact solution or accurate. And the point here is that we need to use uh, a large number of samples so the simulation should be with large number of samples only then we can expect better accuracy if we use less number of sample chances are that the solution is not very accurate okay um, so it goes without saying you know that this is a technique that is not always preferred if you have a solution easy solution go for that but if you cannot find an easy solution to problem, uh, specifically if an integration problem, it's a very complicated function to be integrated and you do not know how to actually find solution to that, use Monte Carlo simulation, right? We'll understand the theory behind it. It's very simple to understand, okay? So there is this function fx and we want to integrate this function fx between values zero and one, okay? Zero is the lower limit, 0 is the lower limit and 1 is the upper limit okay so between these two values 0 and 1 we will like to know the integration of the function fx and I do not know what the value what is the function uh, fx but it detects some sort of uh, this form I mean this particular curve is we have is is, is an example right uh, right so we know that the integration of a function between two value is nothing but the area of under that curve, right? So this curve represents the function. Area under this curve between these two limits, 0 and 1, is the value of the integration. That's something we have learned in high school, right? But how do you find the area under this curve between these two uh, limits, 0 and 1? Right. There are many ways to do that, but one way is to use Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. So in Monte Carlo simulation, what we do is that we first find, we first take uh, a random value between these two limits, 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are the limits, right? We take a random value. It could be 0 0.2, for example. Okay. So x, which is a random value, takes a value of 0 0.2 and it lies between 0 and 1. So what is the f of x? So f of x function of x is f of 0 0.2 right f of 0 0.2 right and f of 0 0.2 will lie on the curve right functional value the value of the function between that takes bit, uh, a value between 0 and 1 will lie in this part of the curve right between 0 1 either it will it won't lie here for sure but it will definitely lie between these two extremes you know see my cursors so if you take any random, sorry, if you take any random value uh, and do the plot, it will, uh, the, the value of the function will lie on the plot, right? What you do is that just draw a line, a parallel line to that. I have drawn it, you can see it, the blue line, and this is the point, right? This is the f of 0 0.2, which is lying on the curve. Passing through that line, you just uh, draw a parallel line and it becomes a rectangle, right? Now the area of the rectangle, 
look at the rectangle right this is the rectangle the area of this rectangle is very similar to the area under the curve not exactly the same but similar very close to that right and what is the area of a rectangle it is the product of the you know the length and the breadth or the base and the height right in this case 0 to 1 so that's your uh, length and breadth is just the height right this particular height okay my cursor is not working well so it's 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 just the you know the height or you look at the cursor right that's exactly the height you just multiply that if this is part is a this is b just multiply a and b you get the area of the rectangle you do this experiment again and again right take another random value between 0 and 1 this time you got 0 0.3 and you yeah you calculate 0 point you calculate f of 0 0.3 and then and then you will again have this curve right and it's the same curve same function right and this particular will fall 0 0.3 will also fall f of 0 0.3 will also fall on uh, on this particular curve right and then you draw a parallel line it's a rectangle again you calculate the area again this is not close to the area under the curve right this is what you want but that's not exactly what you get if you calculate the area of the rectangle but it's approximate value of that and you do that repeatedly for hundreds thousands or tens of thousands of times right almost all times you will never get uh, the exact area under the curve but you will get an approximate value sometimes more than the accurate value sometimes less than the accurate value but when you average it across a number of times hundreds and thousands of times you will see the value average value of the area of the rectangle will be very similar to the average value of the uh, or the exact value of the area under the curve right so that's about random sampling you are randomly taking numbers finding area of these rectangles take the average of the area of the rectangles and that will be very close to the area under the curve right so that's the point here about random using random sampling uh, to find area under the curve or value of the integration okay we'll take a simple example right our function is x square we want to integrate that between 0 and 1 very easy to integrate right we have learned it in high school how to integrate uh, a function uh, between two values two extremes lower limit and upper limit x square integrates to x cube divided by 3 right it's like if we're integrating x to the power n that's x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 right that's the formula we we know uh, for the integrations right and limits at 0 to 1 so x to the power 2 plus 1 n is 2 here so 2 plus 1 is 3 so x to the power 3 divided by 2 plus 1 which is 3 so x cube divided by 3 you apply the upper limit so you 1 to the power 3 divided by 3 minus 0 to the power 3 divided by 3 this part is 0 so what remains is 1 to the power uh, sorry 1 cube divided by 3 so 1 cube is 1 and then in the base you have 3 so 1 by 3 is the answer to the solution 1 by 3 is nothing but 0 0.33 right so this is a simple function we are able to integrate it very easily using our hand we don't need a computer to do that we don't need any simulation but this is not always the case many times you will have very complicated functions to integrate something that we cannot integrate it using using hand and therefore you use computers and one way to easily find you know approximate uh, value of an integration is to use monte carlo simulation that uses random sampling now let's go to uh, jupyter notebook see how you can do that in uh, in python okay we will import uh, some important libraries uh, numpy and <coughs> simpy so from simpy we will import symbols and integrate so uh, first we will do the normal integration the proper integration that we you know hand calculation that we did to see the actual value this is not Monte Carlo simulation yet we will go to that next okay we will do that next so we uh, use the integrate function we provide uh, the function as the parameter 
and the upper limit zero and uh, and one the lower limit and the upper limit and when we run this we get the value of the integration so that's one way of doing that right but you can also use Monte Carlo simulation we will understand how to write a function that will do Monte Carlo simulation to find out value of an integration okay I've given it uh, a name Monte Carlo integration you can give any name to this function okay and what are the parameters required uh, is actual the function to be integrated and uh, the lower limit and the upper limit lower limit is a upper limit is b you can you can use any variable uh, any you know to denote that and the number of samples right it could be 10,000 100,000 the more number of samples you use the higher chances of getting more accurate results so have that in mind right so what's the logic you first uh, get uh, some random value between the lower limit and the upper limit lower limit is a upper limit is b so just get a random value how you can do that use the random dot uniform function from numpy and you can get that right provide a and B as the lower and upper limit, it will give you some random value between these two numbers. And you also mentioned how many of these random numbers you want, right? Always do, uh, always give more samples or more number of uh, such random sample. That is always good for you. Uh, it, it's good for our calculation. We will get a more accurate result, right? Uh, we'll vary that also. We'll see actually if you vary how the results change. That also we will see. Okay, uh, why use uniform? This is uniformly distributed uh, simply because uh, the probability of selecting a value uh, between A and B, between the lower limit and upper limit is exactly the same. That means we are not biasing the outcome, right? So therefore you are using the uniform uh, probability distribution, right? So once you have, so what, what will you have in examples, right? So what, you know, if, you, if I show this, Right. Let me first show this what you get if you use only this part of the code. If you use this part of the code, okay, this is 0 and this is 1 and we want, for example, let's say we want 5 random samples and let's run this. Um, sorry. So we will get five such cases, right? So here you see these values are between zero and one. You can have infinite number of such cases, right? So this is what you get. And then you get Y of sample. So what is Y of sample? So it is the F of X that we learned in the theory, right? So that's the function and you're taking the value, the random value and using the function it could be x square, it could be log of x, it will be exponential of x, it could be any other function, mathematical functions, and then you get the value. The f of 0 0.01, f of 0 0.012, 0 0.53, and so on and so forth. There can be thousands and hundreds, you know, uh, millions of such random samples, right? So that, so y of sample, what does it mean? f of x, what, what is that? That's the height of the rectangle, right, that we learned, right? And you calculate the average height of that, right? If you take 10,000 such random samples and, you know, calculate the average height of that, that would probably be giving you a very close answers to the area under the curve, okay? And what is the area under that rectangle? It is just a multiplication of the height to the, to the base, right? To the breadth. And breadth is B minus 1. Isn't it B minus 1? Yes, right. So we saw that, right? You have lower limit A and upper limit B. So you know the the total breadth is B minus one. In this case, it is one minus zero, right? And right because there are so many samples, you will get an approximate answer. And we let's run this, right? So I have run this particular code, and let's do this for x square. The same functions, upper limit and lower limits are one and zero respectively, and we're doing it for ten thousand observations and you see you're getting 0 0.33 right imagine you just take 10 observations right you won't get a very accurate result let me show you 
zero point three four. Right. The interesting thing is that if you run it again, it will give a different value. Simply because these are random numbers, and we do not know what random numbers will be generated. It's zero point one eight. You see, it's it's not at all accurate. Right. We run it again. Zero point four three. Again, not accurate. Right. We should be getting zero point three three. And that's because we have taken less number of samples. If we increase that to let's say 100, you will see the variation will be a lot less. It's 0 0.37, let's run this 0 0.38, 0 0.38, 0 0.32, it somewhat closer to 0 0.33, right? Let's take 1000. 0 0.32, 0 0.33, 0 0.34. So pretty close now, right? But it will be even more close if you take 10,000 samples. 0 0.34, 0 0.33. Let's take 100,000 such cases and you see it is very close to 0 0.33, right? So the idea is to use as many number of samples you can. Let's now take a more complicated function. We used a very simple one, x square, but now we change it to x cube plus x square plus 5, which is slightly more complicated function. Still not that complicated. You can use hand calculations to integrate this, but let's use uh, let's use Monte Carlo simulation. Let's uh, first do the simple integration, right? Using the integrate function from SymPy, which is very easy to do, right? Just use the functions and it gives a value of 1218, right? Start with 100 observations, 100, uh, 100 samples. So we have already written the function, right? We're not write it again. We just have to change the function. Right now the function is changed from x square to x cube plus x square plus five. Here is what, and the limits are so okay. So I have also changed the limits. Right, lower limit is two and the upper limit is eight. Lower limit is two, upper limit is eight. Number of samples I've taken is hundred. Uh, let's run this. You get twelve hundred and sixty-eight. Right, not very close. Right, let's increase the number of samples to thousand and you will see a more accurate number okay 1237 uh, which is close to 1218 1218 is the actual uh, the accurate value of the integration right let's increase that to 10000 right it's more accurate right 1213 uh maybe 100000 1221 okay more 1 million 1220 wow maybe 10 million Oh, it's taking some time. 1217.8, very close to 1218, right? Maybe let's take 10 million. It's going to take some time actually to run, but it's worth waiting for it. Let's hope that it is very close to 12, 1218. It is very close to 1218, 1218.01. Can we take 100 million maybe? I'm not sure if this will run, but let me try because it's computationally very intensive so it will take a lot of time let's wait if this value is very close to 2018 or not i assume that it will be very close to 2018 right but you don't need 100 million such samples even with a million samples or even 100000 samples you are getting a very close answer right the approximate answer is very close to the the real answer the accurate answer as expected, it's taking time, so it, it's not going to run so fast. But you can try out, right? You can try it with more number of functions, different types of limits. Keep playing around with it. If you run it over again and again, you will get different answers. You also keep changing the samples from very small samples to to very large number of samples, and you see the you know the the differences in the results right so thanks thanks for watching this video i'll see you in another video we still not run actually oh it's stuck oh that's of